application. Welcome to the MSME Radio Network, a division of the Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network. The following program broadcast is an original creation by the broadcast entity. Discussion within the following broadcast should be used for informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice or consultation. Before considering application of any broadcast content in the following program, please consult your health care provider. If you feel you are having a medical emergency, please contact your local health services for immediate assistance. MSME Media and the Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network do not guarantee or warrant the accuracy of information in the broadcast to follow. The Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network provisions broadcast services to program hosts. Information discussed in the broadcast does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or goals of the network and are solely those of the show broadcast hosts. Should you wish to host a broadcast, please visit our website at msmemedia.com and submit a request to become a program host. We thank you for listening to the MSME Radio Network. Enjoy the show. Hi, and welcome to this broadcast of Living Wise with MS. I'm your host, Kim Freiling Resar. First, I'd like to thank MSME Radio, along with the Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network, for this amazing opportunity. I think it's such an incredible initiative bringing together all of these various MS voices together to spread awareness and offer support to the greater MS community. The goal of this show and every Living Wise with MS broadcast is to empower people living with MS to live the best possible lives they can. Living Wise means so many different things and with each broadcast I hope to address the various components that make up the big picture of what it means to live the best possible life you can with a chronic illness. Before I get started, and I feel a little bit like a broken radio because I start every broadcast this way, I want to stress how important it is that you're the one that finds what works best for you. And this is such a variable disease, and although there are so many similarities to what each of us experiences, what works for one person may not work for another. So take everything people say, including me, with a bit of perspective. I know everyone means well and they wanna share what works for them and they're excited to share it with you because they wanna help each other. The MS community is amazing that way. They wanna help, but take it with, with a grain of salt because you're the one that really needs to find the things that work for you. I mean, definitely take, take things from other people, learn from other people, but you're the, the ultimate person that needs to find what works best for you and only you. I truly feel like that is the, the key to living successfully with MS, discovering what works for you. Today's broadcast, we're gonna focus on becoming pregnant while you have MS. So this is for the women of the audience. And I've seen some comments before on through social media and other outlets about some women with MS being told that they shouldn't have children. Now I know MS presents differently in all of us and there are some women who may have riskier pregnancies, but I, I, I hate seeing another person with MS questioning one of their life goals and being told that they can't do something that they've always wanted to do. I know realistically, it might be a possibility that some people may not be recommended to get pregnant, but on the whole, on the bigger picture, it, it's possible, and people do it all the time. Women with MS have successful pregnancies all the time. So I hate to see someone questioning one of their life goals and being crushed because of the possibility that they won't be able to fulfill one of their dreams because of MS. Women with multiple sclerosis can have very successful pregnancies. It is very possible to have a baby when you have MS. In fact, I'm a woman with MS who's had two successful pregnancies. And I had MS before both of my children were born. I was diagnosed in 2003. I had my first son in 2006. And then I had my second son in 2012. Now, there are more things to be taken into consideration 
for a woman with MS than for a woman who doesn't have MS. But I really believe that with education, proper planning, both prenatal and postpartum planning, and good communication with your healthcare team, that it is possible to have a baby while living with MS. It's more than possible, and it's been done, and it can be done again. Now, that being said, as I say at the beginning of every broadcast, everyone needs to think about their own personal health first and foremost. I'm sure that there are extreme cases out there where having a child may be riskier for some women with MS than for other women with MS. But remember, even in healthy women, and I I quote unquote healthy women because I kind of hate the, the... the fact, thinking that just because you have MS, you're not healthy. I mean, I know we have a disease, but that bothers me. So quote unquote, healthy women. So even in healthy women, there are risks in pregnancy. So women who don't have MS, there are risks there as well. And from a personal standpoint, from my own personal opinion, I I feel like if you get information from your provider that you shouldn't have a child, and that is one of your life goals, I would highly recommend that you get a second opinion and seek out what other practitioners have to say about the possibility of you becoming pregnant. Because I really don't feel that anyone should tell you you can't or shouldn't because of MS. That's a big whopper of a statement to hear, and you want to be confident and sure that that's the correct information that you're receiving. You don't know, and I always take into account what your healthcare practitioner has to say, but also know that they're human too, and they might not be informed as well on MS, and they might not, they or they might have misinformation or old information that maybe, maybe at some point they didn't recommend women get pregnant. Just like exercise at one point they thought that exercise was bad for people with MS. So take that all into consideration. You know, make sure that you're getting the proper information from your healthcare provider and that you have that good open communication with them and let them know that that's one of your goals and they will help you to to reach that goal. They really want to do what's best for you and and help you achieve that. So before making your decision to start your family, I always think it's it's a good idea. You know, you can't always plan it, but if you can, you know, make sure before you decide to start, it's a good idea to, to get as informed as possible, to, to collect as much information as possible about pregnancy and MS. You know, I would recommend seeking information from reputable sources, always reputable sources, like your neurologist, your OBGYN, Uh, The National MS Society has great resources. There's a lot of other online resources that come from trusted, trusted, reputable sources. And even at the website I work for, livewisems.org, we have lots of um, information about pregnancy and MS. So always consider the source and be careful. Really be careful about information you may receive on social media. Again, I know everyone is trying to help, but you got to take everything other women are saying with a grain of salt and try to focus on your personal situation. I, I firmly agree that absolute statements do not work in this arena, not at all. And as we know that living with MS, you know, the absolute statements just do not work. It's such a variable disease. What worked for one woman may not work for another. And one woman's experience is might be completely different from another. Everyone's MS is different, so why wouldn't everyone's pregnancy be different? Everyone's pregnancy experiences would vary greatly. And plan. Try to plan as best you can. I think with proper planning, you can have a successful pregnancy with MS. Be sure to talk to your healthcare practitioner about your goal of having children, if that is one of your goals. And they will help you with pre-pregnancy planning, which will consist of of when to stop taking your MS medications 
and how long you should be off of your DMT before you try to conceive. There are different risk factors with, with all of the DMTs, and there's been studies about um, the effect that it may have on, on fetuses. But your healthcare provider will, will talk to you about that information and also talk to you about timing. You know, some women um, do experience positive effects on their MS uh, symptoms while they're pregnant. They, they um, do experience a period of calm because there are positive anti-inflammatory agents in your blood when you're pregnant. It's kind of what, whatever your body is doing to protect the fetus. It also has residual positive effects on the mother. So having said that, though, going into your pregnancy, it's probably a good idea that you are in a relative state of calm going into it. So being in remission, basically, and not being in a flare. Your body's going to go through enough changes that it makes sense that you want to not be dealing with a flare at the same time as when you become pregnant. Like I said, your body's going to be going through a lot carrying the baby that you don't want to have to worry about a flare or, um, or an exacerbation at the same time. There are ways of dealing with it. I believe that IV steroids um, can be given while you're pregnant and can help to alleviate the flare. And, but you always talk to your healthcare practitioner about it because there are, there are ways around it. So with the proper planning, the pre-pregnancy planning uh, is just as important for, for your health as it is for your, your baby. Um, and it's probably good in this planning um, to have a postpartum plan as well. And that would consist of whether you want to breastfeed or not um, and how long you want to breastfeed for and when's an appropriate time to go back on your medications. And as with any plan, and I think with MS, we've learned this, that we have to be flexible with any plans that we make. And we can't, we can't sometimes stick to them because you just don't know what's going to happen. And you have to be able to be flexible, roll with the punches, and go with plan B or even plan C or, God forbid, plan D. But as we know, um, life is unpredictable, MS is unpredictable, and we, we need to be um, flexible with with, with our planning. Smart about it, but flexible about it. And we also, going into a pregnancy and deciding to become pregnant, you want to make sure that your team is on board. And I've talked about teams before. You want to make sure your healthcare team is on board, but you also want to make sure that your home team is on board. And when I say your home team, I mean your, your, your family. Um, in addition to working with your healthcare team, you need to make sure you've got the support system going at home. You know, you want to make sure that your partner knows that um, you may need extra support during this time. It's a, it's, it's a big, huge thing. You're carrying another human being. You may need that, that extra support and not only physically, but mentally that support. And so your partner may need to pull some extra weight and help out even more and just be a little bit more understanding. And other family members may offer to help as well. And I want to, to encourage you to take them up on it. I know it's so hard sometimes to accept the help and you don't want to feel like you're a burden or anything, but you're doing a big thing. You're doing a huge thing. Like I said, you're growing a human being and you should take them up on that help. Um, absolutely. You need to take care of yourself first and foremost. Absolutely. And be, be vigilant to listening to your body. Um, and as part of that postpartum plan, when you're thinking about it, that you need to know that there have been inconclusive studies whether breastfeeding has held off um, any kind of relapse. Um, there's some studies that suggest it has positive effects on, on MS um, and holds off that, um, keeps some of that hormone in your system that protects you and the baby. But, um, there's also a high, uh, percentage of relapse. So within three to six months postpartum, you have a higher chance of having a relapse. So take that into mind, keep that into consideration when you're doing your, your post planning. 
Now, is there anything else to consider when you're getting pregnant? There are some information and statistics out there that you may want to take into consideration, although I would recommend taking them with, again, perspective. There is, there is a slightly higher chance that children from a parent who has MS has a slightly higher risk of developing MS in the future compared to the general population. I think um, there was an article in the Journal of Pe Pe Perinatal and Neonatal Nursing that states um, that a child who has a parent with MS has a three to four percent risk of developing the disease compared to the risk of in the general population. So for me personally, I understood that risk but I found the percentage to be rather low and of little concern. I mean, you can't, and you can't live in fear and you can't let fear dictate your decisions or your goals in life. I mean, just, I don't know what the chances are of being hit by a bus, but I mean, anything and everything can happen in life as we know that. I wanna be educated of the risks, but I'm not gonna let fear dictate my decision or affect my life goals or on the greater scheme of things I'm not going to let MS affect something that that I've always wanted to do in life and and one of those things is is to be a mother um, and I hate hearing when others are affected by this and seeing that um, maybe MS is going to cause them to give up one of their goals or one of their dreams For my personal experiences, um, being pregnant with MS, um, as I mentioned previously, I had two successful pregnancies, one in, in 2006, three years after I was diagnosed, and one in 2012. Um, I'm lucky to say that they were rather uneventful, really healthy pregnancies, um, no major problems or issues during the pregnancy. I felt really good during both of them. Um, no relapses, no problems with my MS. I was in relative states of calm. It was, they were just, they were wonderful pregnancies. I felt really good and really strong. And in fact, to the point where my, my mother would, would, if she had her choice, I would be pregnant all the time. Um, but she also knows um, that I need to take care of myself and my health comes first. Um, I think she just wanted more grandchildren, and uh, to be honest, and uh, but I know, all kidding aside, I know she knows my health is 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 most important as well. Um, and when it comes down to the choices, I know I'm at a stage in my life where I don't have that energy physically or or even mentally for another child. I'm very happy with um, my two healthy and happy happy boys. Um, now with my first son, um, I went off the, I went off the med MS medication as soon as I suspected that I was pregnant. Now it wasn't ideal, um, cause I'm not sure if any of the medication was still in my system while I was pregnant with him. I was still very in the early stages of pregnancy. I think I was being, having MS, I become more in tune with my body. So I knew I was pregnant within weeks, I knew something wasn't right. So I stopped you know, right then and there. Um, I felt great during that pregnancy and had a very easy delivery. And I was able to breastfeed my first son for six months. And then I had a relapse. So uh, I had to stop breastfeeding at that six month part. Um, and I went in at that point for pediatric or pediatric, periodic, excuse me, uh, MS tongue there, um, periodic IV steroids. Um, and, and I went right back on my medication. So right at that six month part, um, I had that relapse. So take that into consideration that there is that possibility. Now with my second child, and I don't know if it was age related, um, MS related, well, obviously it was MS related, but um, my neurologist and I decided to be a little bit more 
aggressive this time around. Um, he wanted to get me in as soon as possible after delivering my second child for an MRI just to make sure that where I was basically with, with, at that point. Um, so about a month after delivering my second son, um, he had me in for an MRI and it turned out that I was having activity and I had a flare. Um, I didn't realize it at the time because I thought I was just extremely tired. I had just given birth to a, a baby and I had a, a kindergartner at home. So it was um, a lot going on. So I thought maybe time then was it, but it, the MRI did show that there were active brain lesions. So I had to make the decision. My, my original goal was I wanted to breastfeed my, my second son for as long as I breastfed my first son. But again, there goes that the being flexible with your plans, it kind of got thrown out the window and MS had a different, uh, a different path for me. So I had to change gears a little bit, much to the urging of my husband. If, if I could have, I would have breastfed longer, even though I was in a flare. But my husband had to kind of give me a reality check and say to me, Kim, you know, if, if you go down, if you, if your flare gets worse and you get sick and you're, then the whole household goes down. You know, if, if mama goes down, the whole household goes down and no one is going to benefit from this. So you really need to take care of yourself. You need to get back on the medication. So I, I breastfed for another, I think, two weeks. So my second son got about six weeks of breastfeeding. And then um, I had to go back on the medication. You know, I went in for the, the IV steroids again to calm down the flare and then went right back on the medication. And I have to mention too, which I didn't mention previously, that when I did want to try to conceive my second child, I did go off um, my, my MS medication, my DMT, for about three months before I conceived, and that was on the recommendation of my neurologist, that he wanted uh, the DMT, that particular DMT that I was on, to be completely out of my system before I even conceived. So uh, luckily I was fortunate enough that on the fourth month, um, I actually, my husband and I did conceive, so it wasn't that long being off the, the DMT before we did conceive. But again, very successful pregnancy, um, very happy, healthy baby. And um, I, now I just, I have two healthy and happy boys who have just made my life so full and I can't imagine not having them in my life. And they're just such great motivators to me um, to stay as healthy as possible. And, and to keep this fight going, to keep this fight with MS going. It can be really hard, but when you see your children kind of looking to you, it's, it's just, it's an amazing, amazing thing that you, it just, it, it's such a motivator to stay healthy and to lead by example. I do, now I do try to take things into consideration where they might be at a greater risk. So I do try to get them outside as much as possible to get their vitamin D. We live in the Northeast. So it, it's, they're at even higher risk there since we live further away from the equator. So I try to get them their, their vitamin D. I even give them a vitamin D supplement um, to hopefully lower that three to 4% risk. Um, but again, I can't worry about that. Um, I, I have to just raise them and lead by example and instill in them the knowledge that they can really overcome anything that comes across their path, whether it be MS or, or any, any other obstacle. So having children was one of my life goals and I wasn't going to let MS stand in my way. And I just want to share with all of you that I was able to fulfill, fulfill that goal despite having MS, and I want to urge you that if that is one of your goals, to really talk to your healthcare practitioner. Um, 
And then if you have any questions or concerns about MS and pregnancy, to seek out the, the right reputable source and find the information that you need, it can be done. And it is just, as any parent will know, it is such a rewarding, uh, fulfilling life experience that you don't want to miss out on. And I hate um, hearing that MS could have could impede that experience for anyone. So I wish you the best of luck with all of this. And if you do decide to become pregnant, um, I wish you luck and also um, say to you that you won't sleep for a few years, but you'll get used to it. Don't worry about it. Um, I want to let you all know that you can find me on livewisems.org. And I hope that you join me for future Living Wise with MS broadcasts in which we talk about other things that, uh, and other ways that you can live successfully with MS. And again, you can find me on livewisems.org, which is a patient and caregiver resource site. Uh, it's brought to you by the International Org Organization of MS Nurses. It's a terrific website that brings patient summaries of clinical content. So whatever your practitioners are reading, we offer um, summaries of that content. So you can see what, what your, your nurses and, and physical therapists are reading, the journal text. We also have um, social media pages on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Google+, and Instagram. And I highly recommend you to check us out. You can also contact me at editor at livewisems.org. I would love to hear from all of you, um, any feedback or questions, or even just um, to vent, you know, to let it all out. I'm here to listen. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, I hope you join us again for another Living Wise MS broadcast. Again, be well, find what works for you, and we'll talk next time. Bye.